the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, welcome to our celebration of the fifth Sunday of Easter. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me and to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Everything God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit, and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Salmo 
con Soriana. Que tu misericordia, Señor, venga sobre nosotros como lo esperamos de ti. Aclamen justos al Señor que merece la alabanza de los buenos. Den gracias al Señor con la cítara, toquen en su honor el arma de diez cuerdas. La palabra del Señor es sincera y todas sus acciones son leales. Él ama la justicia y el derecho, y su misericordia llena la tierra. Los ojos del Señor están puestos sus fieles, en los que esperan en, una, en su misericordia, para librar sus vidas de la muerte y reanimarnos en tiempo de hambre. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his words. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else, believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is a beautiful gospel. And it's customary to read this gospel during funerals because it's very comforting. Particularly the first part, in my father's house there are many dwelling places. And then Jesus goes on to say, if there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? Like Jesus is saying, no, I'm not trying to tease you, I'm not trying to entice you or whet your appetite. This is the real deal. I've said it because I mean it. And I'm a man of my word. So, I want to speak a little bit more in detail about the first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles. And I know that it was read in Spanish, and so I'll give you a moment, if you did not read it in English, to pause before I continue on with the homily. The Acts of the Apostles. speaks of the early church trying to conform to the needs of its people. And we see here really the first instance of the office of the diaconate. The word deacon in Greek comes from the Greek word diakonos, which means servant or head waiter. We see in the Acts of the Apostles, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. And so they selected seven reputable men. Stephen was uh, among them, and he was one of the first martyrs of the early church. Now, going on, this is we see this is how the hierarchy of the church begins to form. It's not like Jesus came and said, okay, you're going to have bishops, you're going to have a pope, you're going to have priests, they're going to dress like this, and then you're going to have deacons, and this is how the mass is going to go. It didn't work like that. Things evolved and developed over time according to the needs of the church, which was continuing to develop. And I think if you um, allow me to walk with me during this brief little history lesson, hopefully I'll try to not make it sound like a lecture, but hopefully you can come to appreciate more, as I have, having learned this, the Spirit's power within the church over 2,000 years of uh, kind of carrying this on. 
So, um, Paul, we hear also in Paul's letters, and again in Acts of the Apostles, the hierarchy of the church form in the office of the diaconate, priesthood, and the, uh, the office of a uh, bishop. The word priest in Greek comes from the word presbyteros, and the word bishop in Greek is episcopos. So, when you think of the different Christian denominations, you think of Presbyterian and Episcopalian. The Presbyterian's highest form of power is the presbyter or the priest. They don't believe in bishops or popes. The Episcopalians believe their higher power or highest power is the episcopos, the bishop. In Greek, that means overseer. They don't believe in the Pope or any, you know, anything like that. So we see how the hierarchy began to form in the early church. Now, I think if we can see the roots of the priesthood and the, uh, the, 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 the episcopacy and the diaconate, 2,000 years ago in the Acts of the Apostles and in the letters of Paul, if we can come to appreciate how this develops, then I think we would have a much easier time in general dealing with the current, the sway, moving, changing current and tides of our world, our culture, and even our church. The roots of our history go back 2,000 years ago. Even if Jesus didn't literally say, this is how you're going to do things. Because he ascended to his Father, and is so united with his Father, he sends us the gift of that love, of the relationship between Father and Son, the Holy Spirit. And we are now in the age of the Holy Spirit, and we've been in that age for the last 2,000 years. The Spirit blows where it wills, just like the wind blows where it wills. And we try to predict or try to control it, but we can't. Sometimes we have to just buckle up and go along for the ride. But if we understand our roots and where we come from, we'll have a much easier time planting those roots into solid soil, so that when the winds of chaos and turmoil come, not if, but when, we can stand firm in the faith of Christ Jesus, a faith that never changes. He guards us from evil and leads us to all that is good. 
With faith and confidence, we now come before our good and loving Father with our prayers. For Pope Francis, Bishop Parks, priests and deacons of our diocese, Priests and deacons of our diocese, for following Jesus, the Good Shepherd, for leading others to fuller and holier lives, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are frightened due to the pandemic, for the risen Christ to calm their fears and lead them from darkness, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those working to end the coronavirus pandemic, for those caring for the sick, developing treatments or researching vaccines, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are good shepherds by caring for sick children, the elderly, and those terminally ill, for the good shepherds renew them and fill them with energy and peace, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our St. Anne Christians, for following the voice of the good shepherd wherever he leads us, for the grace to trust, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth, who are discerning to follow the Good Shepherd in the priesthood and religious life, especially our own Jose Zamora, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are ill, especially those with the coronavirus, for the risen Lord to bring an end to the pandemic, and for those who have asked us to pray for them, especially for Father Dan O'Connell, Robbie Smith, Ken Prater. God's love, peace, and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those who have died, especially for Matt Fargo, Nick Milano, Linda Barber, Rosita Dela Rosa, Kevin Roberts, Werner Meyer, Patricia Ann, Taija, Mary Plazessa, for God's gift of eternal life, let us pray. Lord hear our for the people of our parish for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers. For our personal intentions. Let us pray. Lord God. Lord God, you sent your Son, the Good Shepherd, to guide and lead us. May we continue to hear his voice, follow him, and have life abundantly as we face the challenges of daily living. We ask this in Christ.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. <laughs> Este es el sacramento de nuestra fe. Acuérdate también de nuestros hermanos 
que se durmiera en la esperanza de la resurrección y de todos los que han muerto en tu misericordia. Admítelos a contemplar la luz de tu rostro. Ten misericordia de todos nosotros y así con María la Virgen Madre de Dios, su esposo San José, los apóstoles, Santa Ana, Cuantos que vieron en tu amistad a través de los tiempos, merezcamos por tu Hijo Jesucristo compartir la vida eterna y cantar tus alabanzas. Por Cristo, por el día a ti Dios Padre omnipotente, en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, todo honor y toda gloria, por los siglos de los siglos.
act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The prayer requested by Pope Francis. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sin, who at the foot of the cross were united with Jesus in suffering and persevered in your faith. Protect us of the Roman people. You know our needs, and we know that you will provide, so that as at Cana in Galilee, joy and celebration may return after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the will of the Father and to do what Jesus tells us. For he took upon himself our suffering burdened himself with our sorrows, to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Obviously, today we uh, celebrate a very special day for all mothers. And even though, unfortunately, if you're a mother or father or whoever, you can't join us today. Um, we want to extend our, our blessing to you. Um, and so on behalf of Father John and myself and all of us here at St. Anne's, to all the mothers out there, we thank you. Uh, we uh, honor you this day. And maybe just ask the Lord to give you a, a little blessing as the mothers would bow their heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of motherhood. We thank you for the gift of our blessed mother, Mary, who inspires all of us to be more humble, more docile, and to receive your love. Help all women, all expectant mothers, all spiritual mothers, all women today to feel your blessing, to experience your blessing, and to feel your presence with them this day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. If you've been uh, tuning in with us, you obviously know that this, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel now and that we're going to be having daily masses starting Monday. So I look forward to seeing you guys there, uh, whoever is able to make it and however many we can hold. And uh, it's look, looking like we're going to get through this thing. So I hope that you're all hanging in there and uh, know that you're, you're in my prayers and hope to see you again soon. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks.